This video is for IPs who are confused if they're an ISP or an INP. So I'm going to go into an understanding and a definition of those different aspects. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to have more um, certainty over your type. Okay. Or if this is for somebody else, if you're, if you're trying to understand your friend or your spouse or something like that, uh, then hopefully this will help with that too. All right. What's up team? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology. In this video, I'm going to go into the definitions of extroversion, introversion, sensing, intuiting, as well as the RPG model. I'm going to bring that out. So we're going to get a little geeky on this. Uh, if you don't play games, hopefully you can still follow along. I don't think it's going to be too in depth. It's not about like min maxing numbers and, and rolling the dice and stuff. We're talking about different energies, different characters that are going on within your your mind as you're on the quest to slay that epic dragon that's stopping you from completing your goals. So if you don't know if you're a sensor or an intuitive as your auxiliary function, so your your upgrade, <laughs> the one that's trying to help you out, help you grow your growth function. Uh, if you don't know which one is your strength, then it's kind of like going into life um, not able to, to know how you learn the best. Like I remember when I was studying kanji when I came to Japan for the second time. Kanji is like the, the Chinese imported writing. It's all a bunch of different strokes and lines and things like that. Uh, it's, it's definitely not my strength. You know, I can speak, I can do all that stuff. Fine. Kanji don't really do much with it anymore. Since coming to Japan, actually, I, I stopped. Didn't really have a use for it because I can just use my phone. Like it's it's probably it's the same thing with English. Like spell check does everything for you. You don't need to know how to spell stuff. Get rid of that. So I was studying kanji with my ESTJ friend. So he uses introverted sensing, which I'll get into later, as his strength. He's very good at checking into the past and going through routine in order to ground in and. Uh, an idea or a practice. Okay. It's not how I work. That's, that's not how I work. I just, I struggle with that. So I tried to do it that way. Cause that's the way that everybody does it here. You, you do the rote memorization, you write the kanji like a hundred times and then you know it. Yes. I, I could have put more energy into it, but I tried. He would go like five minutes before the test. He'd be like, okay, write it a couple times and he's good. Me, I would just, mull over it and I'd end up just making up my own kanji because I didn't know. Um, it's because my way of learning is not that. That's kind of my weakness to do it his style. My way is to connect the ideas and, and to make it look like something else, to imagine a story connected with it. And so not knowing that until after I graduated really was, it, it held me back. Like I could have learned so much faster and, and better for me if I had done that, if I had known that information. So hopefully this is going to help you understand your style a little bit better so that you can find ways to, to engage in the world in a way that is your strength. So now let's, let's talk about extroversion, introversion, sensing and intuiting and and really flay this out a little bit then we'll go back into the rpg model extroversion is is a more initiating type energy it's more proactive it's it's trying to get feedback from the outer world it's more active it's more in the moment than introversion introversion is more um compiling and contained it's a little bit, it's more reflective in that sense. It's quieter. It's subjective. It's your own personal understandings of things. Then we go into perceiving functions, sensing and intuiting. Perceiving functions are uh, how you learn about the world, how you take in information. It's the, the filter, the lens that you're looking through in order to understand and, and engage in the world and see what is the information here that I need to know. Sensing is using your senses to perceive. 
Right? It's, it's using your five senses, using your experience in your body, in the environment to understand the world, to learn about things. As you would imagine, that means it's more like concrete and realistic and practical and things like that. And then intuiting is, I always say it's like, it's going to that concrete and then it's springboarding off of it. It's jumping from there to connect the dots, to um, think about the concepts and the theories and imagining things. How are these things connected? What if or why is this going on? Okay, it's more speculative in that sense. Okay, so now we're going to put them together. Okay, and then we'll go into that RPG model. Put them together, you have, for example, sensing and extroverting. Extroverted sensing, using your five senses to perceive the world. And it's more active, it's more outgoing, it's in the moment. As you would imagine, that's, that's what's going on out here. It's the environment. Okay, it's, it's what you can pick up, the, the sun that you can feel on your back, the sand in your toes, the water, right? It's, it's getting into that physical moment, immersing yourself in that. Um, introverted sensing would be capturing those, those experiences and then reviewing them and recalling them later. It's, it's storing these past impressions so that you can go back to it and you can relive that moment and compare it then to what's going on now in the moment. So it's more past oriented, where extroverted sensing is more <laughs> very, very present in the moment oriented. Okay, so now we're combining extroversion and intuition. Right. Intuition is connecting the dots. Extroversion is outside of yourself. So it's it's like the ideas, the memes. It's if I pick up this pencil, how can I use I don't really have a pencil. How can I use it to do things or how can I combine it with something else to see what emerges from there? It's kind of playing with the ideas, shaking up the system a little bit, shaking up that stability. Introverted intuition is doing that, but within yourself in its own way. So it's connecting the patterns, connecting the dots, asking why are things this way in your own subjective understanding, deep in your subconscious, trying to find the patterns to, to understand the, the meaning of things or where things are going in a really long-term uh, future-oriented way. Introverted sensing is that past recalling and recollection introverted intuition is is in the really long future term a lot of times it's seeing where all these different events and things are going to come to a point where the focal point is of all that extroverted intuition is kind of timeless in a lot of ways i mean it's it's out of time maybe in the near future or in the near present, <laughs> if you could say that, or in different timelines, because I think about that all the time. Lines. Okay, so let's bring it into the RPG model and let's explain what this push and pull is a little bit, okay? So an IP, an INP, for example, is going to have an introverted judging process, which we're not really getting into, but it's, you know, it's introverted thinking or introverted feeling. Okay, so it's you're making decisions based on your own internal subjective understanding of how things work or how you feel, who you are, your identity or um, feelings and things like that. Anyway, so you're going to have this conscious push and pull between extroverted intuition and introverted sensing. Okay, let's think of extroverted intuition as this innovative um, artificer, this explorer type character. Okay. He's got, he's like enchanting items and stuff. And he's, he's able to use that to change the battlefield, to change the person who is wearing it, giving them magical powers and, and kind of shaking things up, playing with the situation, a little explosive <laughs> and, um, excitable, optimistic, and he just wants to know what's going to happen. What if we do this, right? So he's always trying to push INPs into those kind of environments. He's like, why don't you just do it? Just go experience it. Like, just go play with it. Go imagine a new world or something like that. Let's just go fight the biggest beast that we can. Introverted sensing, 
on the other hand, is this calm, methodical guardian type character. He's he's going into the past. He's recalling those strategies and and the the techniques and the things that worked in the past. How he felt about certain approaches and and battle formations and experiences, and using that to to stabilize things to make sure that things are um, comfortable physically comfortable right it's it's sensation it's physical and so for an INP you're constantly going to have this push and pull back and forth between these two voices like go explore go do things now let's let's maintain our energy let's you know conserve things let's preserve our energy and our feelings or our our correctness with this like our understanding of the world the framework the model that we're seeing the world in you know we don't really want to get new feedback so let's you know let's hold back a little bit right stay behind me i got that shield so there's that constant push and pull um, for me it, it came out when, <laughs> especially when i went to japan talk about it a lot now on this channel but it's it was a difficult choice it was like and it is for anybody but it was like do I really want to explore this new world do I want to get out of that physical comfort zone do I want to push myself to try to see who I am I'm an INFP right do I really want to understand all these possibly negative and positive things about myself and about other people and it was a it was a hard choice, right? One of the best choices, if not the best choice in my life. But it's difficult, cause that oh that introverted sensing that guardian is so convincing. Okay, so let's go over now to ISPs, ISTPs, ISFPs. Already talked about introverted thinking, introverted feeling, but now we're talking about a different push and pull. Two different characters that are are saying, hey, do this do this. No, don't do that. Do this, right? That constant conscious push and pull. Okay. Extroverted sensing for the ISPs is, remember, it's out, outer world experience, you know, getting into your body, getting into the environment. This, I imagine it as a warrior, this immersive warrior, this responsive warrior who just wants to go turn things up a notch experience new levels of novel sensations of getting into your body and, and seeing what you're capable of physically um, experiencing more of those awesome environments and thrills and things like that even even new um, flavors spicing things up a little bit right just making things more exciting in the physical realm i imagine he's got like two big hammers he's just swinging or just this massive axe or sword or something like that he's just like so into the moment he's not worried about what's coming or what happened before like now now is when you're alive and he's always trying to push isps to go into that right to get more of that but but the the pull and the comfort zone the relief, the, the newbie kind of like character that's very convincing for ISPs is introverted intuition. Remember, that's going into your mind and, and going through the patterns, understanding how your mind works so you can understand how other people's minds work. I think of it as this clairvoyant uh, ranger, this archer, it's got long range, right? He's, he's climbing up to new elevations, getting new perspectives on things, kind of going around different angles and predicting where things are going to go, where the enemy is going to run, how things are going to transform and very mm, kind of mystical in a lot of ways, uh, kind of like an oracle or prophet or shaman as well, um, seeing things, getting insights that just say this is what we need to do this is where things are going and that's very convincing if you're if you're just like i know exactly what's going to happen and it's happened before like you have a, a track record with it sometimes you miss it out but it's, it's easy to ignore it when that happens you get swept up in the in the theories and the concepts and and ideas 
and imagination and and saying yeah that's see that's what i knew was going to happen and it's easier to trust that for an introvert than it is to go out and get new experiences that challenge your introverted thinking or introverted feeling okay so to to bring this down to a, a bit more of a practical sensor level right i mean i i love playing with the ideas that's where i live that's where i get the both the most the best information in my mind in my mind is playing with extroverted intuition but if you're thinking that you might be an INP you're just you're not really sure okay think about how much time you spend in the past I was asked before like do do I spend a lot of time thinking about the past and I said no but I do right you really got to check in with yourself on these. Take the time to go through your inner monologue. Are you really checking in a lot of times with the past and what was physically comfortable before? What experiences you had before, how you felt about those experiences. Even if you're a thinker, even if you're an INTP, introverted sensing is connected to how you felt about things. It's not using that necessarily to make decisions. It's using it to inform the judging function, to make decisions. So like um, uh, this person lied to me before. Well, when you go into your past, you're going to have these little snippets or grand drawings, maybe even it could be vivid images of your interactions with that person and how you can't really trust them or something like that. But then you're also going to have this push to go explore, to go do things, to, to not, not necessarily get into your body. Something that I <laughs> used as a marker for myself to understand myself, but also other people seem to really resonate with this too. I hated going the same way to work. I still do. It just, it needs to have some new, like, what if, and a little bit new variety. Even if it's like, even if it's going to take me longer, sometimes I just go like a, a detour. Uh, to school, I used to do the same thing. I would just like, yeah, today I'm going to go this way. Today I'm going to go this way. Just to keep things fresh. But it's not like to experience in my body more of things. It's, it's to engage in possibilities. And if you're thinking you're an ISTP or an ISFP, you might want to check in with how often you you listen to the the comforting, <laughs> I guess you could call it comforting, introverted intuition, right? That clairvoyant ranger, the one that's saying like, you know, we have knowledge that you might want. Let's let's inspect it a bit more. You know, come with me on this vision quest and we're going to, to figure it out. We're going to piece all these different things together. And when you do that, you start getting into theories. You start getting into conspiracies, a little bit of paranoia sometimes. Those aren't real airplanes. They were sent by the government. They're aliens. Dinosaur aliens. Flying around in the sky going... Rah. extroverted intuition but that paranoia can keep you from acting keep you from getting into your body because it it keeps you correct it keeps you right it keeps your identity your convictions from um, being tainted because you're not getting into your body right you're like, oh, this person doesn't like me this person's trying to get me fired. Well, if you actually just went up there and had a conversation with them, you would probably realize that they're not doing that. Or they are, and they're not a good person. But introverted intuition is going to pull you from that, right? Because if you were right, then that, that feels good, right? You get that conviction like, yes, I knew it. I knew it all along. And you have no way of, of checking against it if you don't actually take that action. So anyway, think about how much you are into your body. I, I know an ISTP who was like a professional weightlifter. Dude was massive, right? And it's he liked that 
push of getting into his body, of experiencing the limits of what his physical body can do. But it also could be like you just you like running, you like doing a bunch of different sports. You pick them up. You you have a pretty good sense of um, of like tone and taste, things like that. Music could be you know you're you like the physical engagement of the music more than the ideational connections. So think about how much you pull from these unconscious insights. Like for me as an INFP. I don't really get insights. I wouldn't classify them as that. I wouldn't say like, I just know I have this like conviction about this idea, this insight being the correct one. It doesn't really happen. Like for me, it's a lot of high energy throwing spaghetti ideas at the wall to see which one kind of feels right, or which one is the most exciting. Uh, which one is creating new possibilities. Okay, so I hope that this video helped. I hope it gave you the, the information, the connections, the metaphors, analogies that you needed to get more clarity on who you are as a person. Because having all these voices aligned, knowing your skills, knowing how you perceive the world, your worldview, the filter that you're looking through is extremely helpful and listening to those voices when you're supposed to be listening to those voices is extremely helpful. But how can you do that if you don't actually know which ones are, are within your mental questing party, which ones are sitting at the executive board advising you on what to do? Okay, so right now go out, do something and try to understand where are you more? Where are you living more? Are you in the past and then connecting ideas from there, trying to shake things up a little bit? Or are you in your body in the moment and predicting where things are going, getting insights through that? Okay, which is the, the louder speaking pair for you? Please remember to like, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. We've gotten a lot, we've gotten a lot of um, new visitors, new subs. Uh, new comments and things like that. So somebody's been sharing. Thank you very much. I don't personally do it. I, I just got a, an issue with pushing my stuff around. Uh, but if it was helpful for you, it's going to be helpful for somebody else. So please find a way of connecting it to the people that need it. All right. Good luck. Have fun. Peace. You got what I need. But you say he's just a friend. But you say he's just a friend. Oh, baby, you, you got what I need.